hug. Just like before, Stephen entered the room and shook Miss Fergus's hand. Just like before, Stephen wasn't glowing pink. But even though he wasn't pink, he still had something new tumbling around in his head, like a penny in a washing machine. He tried not to feel too guilty about coming up with this problem, but he was here to fix problems, so he might as well get to all of them. Stephen waited as she circled around to her desk, sitting down at the same chair, settling and looking up at him with her usual patient smile, though it was bothered by a crease of concern in her brow. Good morning, Stephen, she said. Are you all right? I've been worried for you since I heard of the incident in town. Oh, right. Of course she would have heard about that. She might have even seen him. Stephen cringed at the thought. That was one of his worst points in a while, and he hoped that she wasn't too disappointed. Oh, um, I'm okay, he began, shifting uncomfortably. I I'm sorry, I, I was- d Did you- Did you see me? Miss Argus nodded, making his stomach take a dive off a cliff as she said, I caught a glimpse of you, yes. I mostly just saw the commotion afterwards. Stephen couldn't meet her gaze anymore. He asked nervously, So, what what have people been saying about me? Miss Ragus paused at that, thinking, before eventually responding with, The usual exaggerations after an event like that. The public can be a harsh judge, but all that matters is that nobody got hurt and your family cleared up the confusion of the authorities later. The words were gentle, but their meaning was sharp. Miss Ragus seemed to see his embarrassed and hurt expression, because she said quickly, you don't need to concern yourself with the public's opinions. Don't let them control your emotions right now. She leaned forwards. All that I'm really concerned with is how it affected you and why it happened. So if you don't mind me asking, are you really all right? Stephen shrugged and began, I mean, now I'm a little better, but it, it kind of set me back for a, a good few days. My family helped the best that they could, but it, it was still pretty bad, even with the medicine. The days after the town incident were almost as slow and awful as the morning he had spent by himself. He wasn't alone this time, but the despairing emptiness lingered for a long while. He moved on to the answer that she was probably wanting to hear more than that. The reason I was in town was because of a nightmare, he winced, breathing deeply. It was about corrupting. I couldn't even remember what it was like before, but it was like the nightmare dragged the memory out of me. Now I remember it clearly. He couldn't suppress a shiver of revulsion, and Mr. Agus asked him, Do you want to tell me about it? He fiddled with the cushion underneath him, nodding nervously. No panicking this time, Stephen. He continued carefully, experimentally. There were these white butterflies everywhere, so much that I couldn't see or hear much. It was the most pain I'd ever felt in my life, and, and my gem was the worst. It was like I was burning from the inside out, but also freezing to death at the same time. All the while, the butterflies ate me alive, all in one big, overwhelming swarm, leaving scales behind. He took a few moments to breathe, peeling the cushion again to make sure that it was still there. Miss Argus was taking notes, listening intently. He tried to keep on going. But, but they weren't just eating my body, they were also eating my mind. All of the issues that were building up were manifesting as the corruption. Everything else that was happening to me alone wasn't enough to literally drive me insane, but the pain that came with the corruption was. It, it kind of caused itself. I, I stopped knowing where I was, who my dad was, who my family was, who I was, and, and then I was just not me anymore. It wasn't just panic, it wasn't just mourning, it wasn't just guilt, it was it was like I'd been erased and I didn't even know it. All I became was a monster. I didn't know that I used to be Stephen, he wasn't just hidden somewhere, I couldn't fight past the pain and find him again, he wasn't there. It was just too painful to remember Stephen at all. He was gone. He pulled his limbs closer to himself letting himself have another small break as he collected his thoughts. He said, I only really began to remember that I existed at all before the pain whenever Nephrite got through to me. That was how they calmed me down. Nephrite told me who Stephen was, and even though I wasn't him, I knew I wanted to be him again. 
was able to stop struggling until the diamond's essence brought Stephen back. He realized almost a minute later that he'd stopped talking. He shifted, feeling a cold worm slither through him as he said, Sometimes it feels like Stephen wasn't supposed to come back, you know? I was taken out of corruption by magic. No normal human could just become sane again so quickly. It wasn't normal. It was good, but it wasn't normal. And the butterflies know it. The butterflies want to get rid of Stephen again. They want to finish what they started. Stephen sighed, rubbing his eyes, saying, And I guess that's why I forgot about it until now. My brain didn't want me to think about the butterflies. It just wanted me to be sane again, even if it wasn't normal. Stephen stopped, shaking his head to try and clear the visions of those same white butterflies that began to crowd in at the edges. He didn't want to go on. <laughs> Sorry, he almost laughed, though the time seemed wrong. I think I tried to forget about this a second time after the nightmare reminded me of it. I didn't even want to think about the nightmare after it happened until, well, now. He directed his explanation past that. So, anyway, I... I woke up after remembering all that, and I guess I thought it was real, so I ran off because I didn't want to hurt my family, and ended up in the middle of the street with people screaming and running away from me. Stephen finally slowed to a stop, waiting as Miss Ragus jotted down more notes. He prayed in his head that she'd have something good to say, something that would maybe make this butterfly thing stop. She always did before, but this was just so much more than he'd ever shown her before. Even his own mind hadn't wanted to show it to him until now. Finally, Miss Argus spoke. You are a very special case when it comes to this, she seemed to agree. Nobody in this entire world has gone through your self-caused corruption before. But you are very lucky to have been given your mind back after losing it. Normally, you would be in an insane asylum after discovering something like that. But thank goodness magic was able to save you from that fate. She nodded and added, You are right, though. Despite it being an incredibly lucky escape, it was unnatural, and you might need some time to adjust. Just remember that you don't have to go back, no matter what these butterflies tell you. They don't get to decide who you are. You deserve to be Stephen, and you'll stay Stephen as long as you remember that. If these butterflies get worse, we have other ways to help, but if it's only a matter of emotional shock, just know that you're Stephen now, and it doesn't matter how it happened. Everybody is very, very grateful to have you back. He felt a little bit of the tension release from his chest, the sounds of flapping wings fading away. He nodded. There was a soft silence, his thoughts settling, rotating back around slowly. This session had gone a completely different direction than he'd intended, but he was glad that it did. He'd rather discover this with her to help rather than on his own later once it reared its venomous head again. They still had time, so he might as well not wait until the next session to talk about it. Stephen tried to remember what he'd wanted to talk about before. It had been important. He straightened up as the idea dropped by again, trying to think about how to word this. It was the problem that had started most of this, the one that had made him propose to Connie. What he was going to do in his life. Even though he wouldn't be healed enough to address this problem for possibly years, he had to think about it. He had to have some sort of plan. Some sort of goal, some path to follow after all this was over. Maybe then he'd be able to hope for a future, one that didn't just involve survival. <clears throat> Miss Argus? He cleared his throat. I, I don't know if this is really in your category, but there's been something bothering me, and, and I need some help figuring it out. That sounds within my category to me. Miss Argus dipped her head. I'll see what I can do. Stephen curved on a grateful smile and began with, so, for the past year or so, after all this stuff with Homeworld was over, I've I've been kind of stuck. All my life I worked to save everyone, and, and now that they're all saved, it's like I'm just at a loss of what to do with myself. My one purpose was fulfilled, so what do I do now? He stopped quickly and hurriedly said, I, I mean, it's not like I want to be in danger again, it's just... What's next? All this corruption scar stuff hopefully won't last forever, so once I'm well enough to move on, where am I going? 
he sighed, a little embarrassed, admitting, I'm sorry, this is probably more of a personal reflection thing. I, I know it's not as big as all the other stuff, but this is just the one that kind of made all the others so much worse, so maybe if I figure it out, it'll make everything easier. Sorry. It's all right, you can talk to me about anything. She considered what he said, and then explained, Most kids your age would be finishing up high school and either moving on to college later or starting their careers. But, obviously, your childhood was very disrupted in almost every stage, never having your future in mind. You haven't even started school yet, and sadly, almost every worthwhile job requires an education. Stephen stiffened up, suddenly afraid that he'd have to go to kindergarten, the elementary school level, not the places that gems were created. He couldn't imagine what it would be like to go through twelve whole years of missed school as the oldest kid to ever exist in the classes. He'd be twenty-eight by the end of it, not counting college, and that was assuming that he started now. He, he couldn't possibly go, not with the scars. How in the world would he juggle school and having depression, anxiety, CPTSD? Miss Rago seemed to notice the brief panic because she reassured him with, But don't worry, I'm sure that if you want to start school, they'll let you have the opportunity to skip up to a normal grade level. Or at least a closer one. As long as you can pass an exam, they'll probably let you go. The government is very loose whenever it comes to you, since they don't want to anger your diamond relatives. Stephen let out a sigh of relief at that, happy to let that problem climb down off of his shoulders. But beyond getting what the government has decided is education, you want to know what you'll be whenever you grow up. Miss Argus went on, asking, So let's start simple. What are some things you like to do? Who are you? He felt a path wash away right below him. He hadn't really enjoyed doing things for a while now. Stephen stubbornly tried again to think past the mass of clogging shadows that blocked off that part of his brain, but fell short once more, caught in its stickiness instead like a fly in a spider's web. I... I don't know. His words drifted along, repeating, I don't know. Arctic cold fear began to seep through his skin, and he had nothing on the inside to warm himself back up. He felt empty, like a hollow tree lying down, dead. I don't know who I am, he breathed, the floor caving underneath him. It suddenly felt like his body wasn't his, not just because it was covered in scales. He didn't recognize himself. He'd been doing one thing for so long, he had no time to become someone other than that. It was like he was starting from scratch. He clenched his eyes shut, whispering, I'm, I'm Stephen, but that's just a name. Who's Stephen if he's not helping people? He latched onto that fiercely. Helping! I like helping! I'm a fixer. I fix people, but nobody needs fixing anymore. They don't need me, and now I'm pointless. Stephen shot up, nearly standing, asking her almost frantically, What do I do without them? Miss Argus held up a hand, her voice a gentle line to follow. I'm not asking who everyone else needed Stephen to be. I'm asking what Stephen wants to be. Before your issues became prominent, do you remember what you used to enjoy doing? Stephen fidgeted, trying to sit back down, saying, Um, not dying? That was nice, and helping people. He'd circled right back around to that again. Miss Argus shook her head before the worry of it took him over again, and tried, But did you have any hobbies? Things that you would do in between missions for fun? Stephen tried to think, pushing aside all the near-death memories he had and trying to find the simpler, happier ones in between them, like flipping through a book. It took almost a full minute, but Stephen eventually began to find the right pages. I... I liked playing video games, watching movies, reading. He knew that those weren't answers, but he said them anyway, just to give himself a runway. I sometimes drew, but it wasn't very good. Closer, not quite. I liked playing instruments, mostly ukulele and guitar. My dad taught me, and I can sing pretty well, I guess. Miss Ragus encouraged that at first, saying, Do you want to be a musician? Stephen rolled that idea over in his head. He liked playing music, but it didn't really sound quite right as something that he'd pursue all the way. It was fun, but it wasn't the same as helping. He shook his head eventually and said, No, I mean, it's fun to play, but it's not really enough. Sorry. Miss Argus seemed unfazed. It's okay. Do you like doing anything else? Or do you have any other skills? Stephen sought out the trail that he'd been tracking before, picking up at... I... I can fight. 
I have magic, of course, and I've already got a lot of practice. He tried to connect this one by himself, attempting, maybe, maybe I could be a police officer, or maybe I could join the military or something. That would be helpful. Miss Raguse frowned slightly and warned, That might be too much. Those jobs are not to be taken lightly. They are dangerous and stressful. You're already starting out with combat-based PTSD. I wouldn't suggest tying yourself down to more of it. You fought enough for this planet already. Stephen realized that she was right. Even though it sounded good at first, he didn't think that he would be able to handle all that. He wanted to get away from fighting, not plunge into more of it. He backed away from that idea. But he soon discovered, with a sinking feeling, that it was one of the last ones he had. He was about to say something about doing whatever Connie was doing with NASA, but he already knew that he'd never be smart enough to keep up with her studying. So what else? Stephen knew what his mouth wanted him to say. Helping. But he already knew that that wasn't a job, right? He really didn't know where to go from here. He hoped that Miss Raguse would be able to somehow help. Stephen blinked suddenly, feeling as if he had been hit with lightning. But it felt silly, something that he couldn't possibly make work. He almost laughed, a part of him denying it, saying aloud, <laughs> Well, I've basically been the Crystal Gems therapist since forever. Maybe I can go back to that. Miss Argus's dark eyes lit up, and she said, That's actually not a bad idea. He caught the idea right before it was thrown out, saying, Wait, really? Miss Argus nodded encouragingly. Of course, you already have a lot of the skills, and helping people with their issues is very fulfilling in my opinion. With more professional training, you could make a very good therapist. He almost felt stupid that he hadn't seen it before. It seemed like such an obvious solution now. Something that had been invisible before now was now raising its hand, threading a kindling golden strand of hope through his thoughts as he pulled it closer. I, I think that's what I want to be, Stephen nodded, feeling tingly with something that had to be excitement. I want to be like you. I want to help other people. I can be a therapist. Miss Raguse chuckled, a brand of pride moving her smile up. <laughs> well, I'm honored. He matched her grin, cherishing the warm beams of sunlight that seemed to be shining down on him. This was a rare opportunity to feel joy, and he was basking in it for as long as he could. And even as their session ended with another check to her watch, Stephen still felt the relief of the breath of fresh air that he'd taken. He knew what he was. He knew who he was. Stephen had found his purpose again.